Hello, this is my Icebox Guide on Sova. I'm going to start off on defense and in mid, because I usually play mid the most. So there's two things to watch out for, and that's going to be the defaulted Viper Orb that might end up here. And there's also going to be players taking fights on this angle. So generally, you want to be able to contest this at least a tiny bit. So even if you take, so when you take fights here, you want to, even if it's non-committal, you do want to take kind of some fights here and show some presence here, just to show, show some pressure that they can't just take space for free. Um, so generally I will be very non-committal here because I do have um, more value as Sova to bring to the rest of the round. But there are contexts where I will be taking these fights fairly confidently, such as being outnumbered. And if someone is like lurking here by themselves, and I know that, then I might be really confident to try and commit to that fight, to try and even out numbers. That could be um, like one of those things, uh, one of these situations. Um, another, so and not another thing, but um, now we're going to go into the orb. Um, and the orb is very, very problematic really for control of this sort of uh, part of mid because we can't see it basically and they can right walk here. through to orange they can walk through right over here. to tube generally i just communicate this to my teammates that they can walk orange and that i can't see the entrance of tube um, and i might even watch this fairly briefly it kind of depends on how much pressure i think they're going to have i might do some pressuring shocks like this i usually do it further down so i don't get my head sn uh, like sliped or like um found from on the ground over here um, some tap um, baits over here that will go basically to the entrance of the tube um, and just sort of pressure them um, in mid. When it comes to recons, I have two recons I tend to do. Um, so the first one is more like, this one's pretty bad. I usually, I, I, not actually, that's actually not the one I do. I actually do one like this. Um, and what it does is it basically just stops players from walking up on me when I'm trying to scale this wall. Um, I generally do this on like eco. Sometimes I'll do it on like bonus rain and that kind of stuff. Depends on what gun I have and that kind of stuff. But generally, I can do that. I, I don't really do it that much. I do it not even once a half sometimes. Sometimes I just won't do it the whole, the whole game. Very situational dart, but I still do it uh, from time to time. It can be quite useful to get some space on some of those lower boy rounds. Um, another dart that you've probably already seen is this one. It lands here and detects anyone going into B main. This one is generally good when you are on you when you are on bonus. Um, and you can use this to kind of determine... Um, and, you know, it, these two darts, I guess, kind of quite good when they're on bonus. When you're on bonus, but generally this is for the fact that they are going to be grouped. So if you know the enemy team likes to play as a group, and I'm using the third round as a, a way to say that they, they're going to be grouped, right? If they buy, they generally are going to be grouped on that round because they don't want to be giving these free like gunfights, these free like X V one, two V one, three V one to the bonus round guns. So they're going to be fairly grouped. So if you do get any pressure on this dart, so they shoot the dart or you get a scan then it means that they're probably at least towards like four players, maybe five players towards that area. Um, and if you don't get nothing, then you can kind of take that as good information too, that they're either hiding from B dart or there's a decent chance they're A. Um, so I use this dart when I'm pretty sure they're going to be grouping up. But generally, if they group up, they are also probably going to make quite a bit of sound. So using this early dart isn't always great. It does, obviously, it's very situational when you do use early darts because in, in ranked, People are going to make mistakes early on in the round and just give you this info for free anyway. So usually I just save my darts for other things that I can use them for. Uh, such as getting kills through smokes for my teammates like this dart. Like this dart. Ahead. So this dart is pretty decent for the first couple times and then it's going to get shot quite often. But that's okay. It's very good for pressuring players. And it's really good for your teammates to get kills through any Viper smokes that happen to be um, in the area. Um, either a teammate Viper smoke or put on 410. Or the enemy Viper Smoke, maybe you can get a kill um, if you decide to scale out and get a kill on. Actually, you probably can't even see them with that scale, maybe here. Um, but generally, I, I don't really do that. I usually just do this and I'll go to actually using my shocks. So my shocks in this area, actually, I'm going to go with drone first. The drone is this simple. It's literally just, I use, you put it on the screens and I just go detect as much as possible. Mark as much as possible to get my teammates kills with tags. Or find info such as numbers that are over near a... Um, and usually like when I have a decent idea of numbers, you can also see like I didn't see the Viper The Viper might be mid because it's Viper, you know, so they might be tied to luck All right, you can kind of get some like info from the fact that you know where the other players are And um, if that makes sense and that kind of stuff is really really important to, uh, to know When it comes to the shocks, um, I have a shock hit actually we do the we do the default shock first So I just do aim in the middle of this line one bait's full charge And it's default um, pretty nice. And then the other ones are kind of over in this region. So there's this one here, which goes belt, I'm pretty sure, like the end of belt. Yep. And then we've got one for the orb, which is about here. So you aim at this. You can actually aim a bit higher too if you want to, like this. 
Get the orb. Um, and there is one on, um, uh, what's it called? Pipes. And usually I can make it forward like this. Then it'll be here. Oh, if I actually put bounces on it. My help. Um, and then there's a bit of pipes. Um, these are generally, this one, the pipes one for sure is generally free throw. You can also do ones that are very close like this. So I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just making the gap smaller. So what happens is it just tightens up the arc. So it goes a shorter distance essentially. So it, I do that if I think like people are hanging around in this sort of section. Um, a lot um, in, the, in previous rounds, I might do this sort of shock. I've just shown. Just because it will pressure them basically uh, to move out that area. And these are all free thrown, so a very decent chance I can miss these. So, you know, I haven't really got proper lineups for them. I just kind of do them on the fly. Um, when it comes to uh, recon, so actually first I'm going to just explain this, that this is fair. This setup I do on silver is fairly similar to Breeze, where I'm going to be mid early on, and then I'm going to move over to A, um, like generally, because it's a lot easier to move over to A than it is to B, because B's rotation is, is a bit harsher to get through. Which is like th this under under the tube is a bit harsher to move through and uh, to get to B than it would be to go CT. Same with like the tunnel on breeze. Um, and generally I'm going to be leaning towards A most of the time when I play Sova on these two maps. And Icebox is literally the same. It's literally exactly the same as breeze in that situation. Um, and so when it comes to actually like playing on A, um, there are some darts you can do. Um, this dart obviously a lot of people know like these types of darts where they free throw them up here and yeah there you go they get they get shot instantly basically. Sometimes I get a scan. Um, in my ELO. They, it's criminal that they get scans, honestly. Um, but yeah, sometimes it does happen. And when it comes to like some funky ones, some fun tech we've got, I've got one from Cavern, um, where you basically line up with this line like this. So I'm lining up this line with this edge. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm going to aim in the middle of this bolt and this line, double bounce, full charge. And what happens here is if anyone's here, they get hit by the shock and I can body shot them. Um, I don't tend to do this on second round, I tend to do this on bonus. Um, if I do have a marshal on the second round, sometimes I'll decide to play orange and just hold mid like this. Um, other times I might decide to do that. I haven't actually really done the cavern play on second round. I, honestly, I probably, maybe it's fine on that round, especially because you're probably under a lot less pressure when you're against classics and even a sheriff won't be able to one tap you from here. So maybe actually it's a good play for the second round too. I just personally haven't done it. Um, another play you can make on A um, is one that I saw recently. So you go against this wall and you want to have an Odin. Um, and what you want to do is the inner part of the charge bar, so the light part of the charge bar, you want to put the bottom right corner on this corner here. And then you want to one bounce full charge. Standing ahead. Oh, sorry, you don't want to no clip through the map, but then you want to go onto the top of this uh, of this uh, box. And you can actually wall bang this. As you can see, you can wall bang this. And then you can wall you can wall bang people on belt. Um, so let me just show the dart real quick, like the actual the way it dart, where it, where, it, where it lands, and what is more, uh, what is a bit less shootable than other darts in this Getting area, ahead. is the fact that it comes through this hole. So it, people don't really see it coming on this section; they see it like kind of not on their screen sometimes, kind of depending on what they're doing. Because um, over here, right, they can even see it on their screen come this way, but they can't see it on the screen like this, right? And a lot of lot of players don't actually path or at least the good players don't path this way you never really path this way in ice box usually players are going to be pathing like this um and it's just to dodge this choke point which mainly dodges anyone posted with an orp up here or like at like a chamber with like his headhunter or just anyone that's gonna be annoying jet it just dodges dodges a horrible angle you never want to really want to fight also dodges like it's a choke point so you're dodging the util that may get sent there like for instance this shock um it's very easy to know just tap Left click it dodges the shot completely to path this way it's just a better way to path on ice box generally um, but yeah that's kind of it for a as well i don't really do a huge amount other than that you can also combine all these like recons with your ult so when you're ulting off a recon so if i ever do this start my ult instead as soon as i see the dart is going to land that's when i want to ult so i'm ready to shoot when the first scan actually scans that's like the main thing you want to do with your ult okay then we go over to b so I'm going to first go over some tiny things that I do when I like rotate over to B. Um, so I, I actually have lost all my darts from over here because usually they were all for B and it required there to be a gap, gap here. So I don't have any darts from actual kitchen, but I do have a dart from over here. And it's a shock. So it's actually, I think again, once again, cab one of caverns. You want to aim at this corner here and we want to put the diamond like this. And then we just want a three bar. 
and he lands over on yellow or over uh, on this like gap of yellow like behind yellow the great shock um a lot of damage generally uh, in the game and when it comes to recon i don't really do too much more recon sometimes i'll do that which is really bad to be honest um there is probably other recons but i just can't quite remember them um, I think there is there is also a shock you can do from here as well, another shock you can do. So you can do cavern shock for back yellow. I also do this one. So I'm just lining up with like the top of this, going here. Like there's like a triangle here. I just go on the right angle of the triangle basically, and you can like one tap, like one. And I think it's three bar. Yeah, it's this. And it lands on like basically this corner. Some players will sit on this corner like this. Uh, I know I've seen a lot of players do it. I do it as well sometimes, and you can get 75 damage on those players fairly easily with this shock. Obviously, they can kind of see it coming, so they might dodge it. Um, but yeah, uh, that shock is useful to know. Um, especially if there's like a Viper War, maybe they uh, distracted or something, I don't know. Um, and that's kind of it for defense. Obviously, it's really nice to have uh, like shocks in this sort of area. So if you want to shock that area, I recommend just pathing this way instead. And then you can just do the shock. shock dart. Perfect. While I did this, I realized I forgot to show this dart. With this dart, you just want to go into this corner, aim at this star, two bar. And it lands default. Yeah. Alt is really strong as well to delay plant on B. Delaying plant on B is always quite useful. So you can do it from kind of anywhere. I wouldn't recommend for doing it this far away. You can want you want to kind of do it in this sort of region. The reason why you want to do it in this sort of region is because you can see you kind of line up with yellow. So you can alt the spot and you can all yellow at the same time. You want to be thinking about those kind of alt lines. Uh, and that's it for defense. Then we're going to go over onto attack. Okay, so on attack, we're going to start off on A. Um, and generally, I'm going to do a dart like this. This isn't one of the first darts I'll do in a game. Or sometimes I'll do this to mix up from this right dart here. over here. So this dart will see a 360 radius over here. It's really good for catching anyone being aggressive. The dart I was talking about just is this one. So you can see you can just about see the wall here. You want to try and get it on this wall like this. And just catch ones again. Any aggressors. Sometimes players that will shoot this will be over here. If you hear them shoot the dart from over here. This dart is a lot better because it means that when they scale out, they actually will not beat the first scan and the first scan will probably go off, uh, which is pretty good. Um, if you want to mix up this dart, that dart with this dart, you can do that. There's also, honestly, any, any you can do kind of any sort of dart over here as well. You can do ones like this if you want to. They are going to be more shootable, but if, obviously if you've like put them in the pattern that you've done other darts, like the, the first two darts, then you can kind of do darts like this and they probably might not get shot 100% um, of the time, they might get the first scan off. Um, then when it comes to actually pathing, you can kind of path, I always path this way, uh, make sure you don't jump off this, you want to just drop off it because you will take damage if you jump, and then you're going to drone like this. Um, and this drone is in a very difficult position sometimes, if, depending on if the enemy knows that you drone from this position. You might get silver ulted, you might get raised you might get viper uh, like mollied or some, some other molly, phoenix molly, whatever. You want to be careful that you, you you know you're doing this in a position that's actually quite safe, or at least you're you're waiting for that util to be gone, or you know that util is not going to hit you. Um, sometimes you can also drone from here. The reason why you would actually ever ever drone from here is if you already already can take this type of space. So you have another initiator on your team, or the viper pit tends not viper pit the viper wall tends to give you this space. The enemy viper wall that goes across right four ten they tend to give you this space, and they don't tend to regress through it. You can end up droning from here. Uh, just need to be careful, obviously, that they don't try and retake the space on you. And it can get a lot more value, this drone can. These a lot more, generally, than this drone. Um, which is pretty good. When it comes to shocks, there's a shock you can do over here. And what this shock does, is it generally just stops the enemy Sova from droning. He It just knocks him off his drone. Uh, which is kind of nice. Um, it also is some nice chip damage sometimes, too. Uh, and that's it. You can also ult, obviously, any lines. Like, there's a line over here you can ult. Uh, which is pretty good for A. And obviously, I like to just... Um, go off what my teammates see on the mini-map too. You can do darts like this that bounce off um, and go backside again, all like this, all, all off that and that kind of stuff. Um, the one thing that I don't like about this uh, like site for, so for server's darts is that unless you get the dart like perfectly, like this or something, generally you're going to have to like choose if I do that dart again. Like this dart doesn't actually see very deep under. So it, the dart back sight doesn't really do a whole lot. Like you kind of want the drone to, to detect back sight, so you want to be careful of that as well. Um, next, we're going to go over on. To, actually, you know what? We're going to do post plante real quick. So post plante, there's plenty of things available to you. Obviously, you have your ult, but you also have some other shocks that you can do. So I'm pretty sure this shock exists, which is one bounce, two bar. 
um, which goes default. It doesn't. I'm not sure exactly if it goes just like a bit past spike. this, so it will have to be planted like out here. It can't be planted in the corner for that. Um, there's also a follow-up dart. You can do that one too, if you want to do it. You obviously can just do the same Shot one again, down. but you can also jump on this, on the same line. No bounce, Shot one tap, one like a tap, and it will actually hit default. So you can do them both together, and then they land not exactly at the same time, but they land fairly similar timing to each other. Like this. I actually did mess up there, so it was actually going to be a bit lighter than what you could get it. But yeah, there you go. That kind of works. Um, I'm pretty sure there's also another one that I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's this, right? Shot Basically down. the same dart. Yeah, it's the same dart basically. There you go. Um, just completely like a bit bit of a different lineup. Uh, and then there's one for the top bit. So the one for the top bit, I'm pretty sure, is you aim here. So you aim in like equal with this light uh, and against this like corner. You bar and it goes onto the uh, like this part, this heaven Plant part this here. Bike. So if you planted this bike there, you have a lineup for that now. Uh, and that's it for the lineups on A that I have. Um, next we go over onto mid. So on mid, I don't really have any like proper good recons or anything. Sometimes I'll recon ahead. through here at a stretch, um, but other than that, I don't really have any. You can also go through here up here as well. Uh, it's also a possibility. I think generally the recon, that recon specifically, actually has got better since this has been closed up. There's just less space for them to be aggressive. Um, in this, like this, like, like this, this hall not being open means that this recon gets more value because it's actually going to get all the aggressive areas uh, that they can play. Instead of like not getting this part, so they can still play this angle. Um, but yeah, that 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 um that node doesn't exist. So there's also two darts here. Um, I don't tend to do any darts from directly mid, as I've said. But this dart, what I will do sometimes. So you just want to do two bar no bounce with. Sorry, I didn't even tell you how to line up. Um, it's just the two diamonds. I'm lining up in between the two diamonds like this. Revealing area. And it just lands in kitchen and detects anyone in kitchen. Um, the reason why I have this one is actually because I have a shock that does um, that does something interesting against like mainly Killjoy and some sometimes sometimes it does it versus Slifer too, but generally I don't really play against Slifer, so I can't really play that for certain, um, especially with the new ice box. Um, but it's gonna land here, right here, and it usually breaks right trips here. and alarm bots that get placed in this area. Um, obviously, they can adapt to it and place them differently. Um, so once you do it once, you want to make sure you try and get impact from doing this. You don't just do it for fun. Um, and that's going to be it for, for mid. Not a huge amount I do. Sometimes I'll drone as well from here. Generally, it doesn't really get that much value, uh, personally, from what I find. Especially because when you go through here, generally you're going to do it fast and the drone is just too slow. Um, so when my teammates go mid, sometimes I'll do like, I'll do like this play here for them to go up tube. Um, and maybe I'll do the recon. And shall do the recon. Sometimes I don't though. Sometimes I just run over here. And then I'll drone for myself. And then I'll uh, recon back over like snowman or whatever for my teammates to fight through mid or whatever. So that's usually like how it goes. Um, sometimes when we go through mid, I like to go through main instead. And then we go over to B. Um, and on B, as I've said, I like to drone for myself over here. This is a good drone now as well. Um, it sees a bit more, I think, than it used to because the, the box being gone. You can kind of see everything as well. Um, I did it fairly inefficiently there. Uh, let's see if we get a more efficient one. Uh, but we'll see basically everything. You can see everything there. See everything there. See behind there. There you go. See, see everything on site too. Um, it's not the greatest of drones, but generally you want to be using it to kind of, especially to avoid this fight. This fight is really, really threatening, especially if it's a chamber. I think chamber is quite good on that angle. Do so be careful uh, there. It's only jet as well, I guess. Um, the other dart I have for this sort of area, or my dart I have for this area. Um, is here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this corner with the king logo like this. It doesn't have to be too precise, but generally you want it more visible than not visible. But I usually put it right up against the edge of the K if possible, like this. Um, and then I'm going to aim at the bottom left corner of this yellow thing here, of this like yellow black like a rectangle. Full charge, one base. And it lands on the edge of this, and it's actually going to detect quite a lot. I'm pretty sure right it detects here. here. I haven't had anyone sit there yet with this dart, so I don't know 100%. He obviously won't right get that here. corner, but it, and it won't get anyone scaling up here. There is This is definitely like not the best dart for this area. For sure, I know that for a fact. But I also don't know how you're going to get a better one. Um, but I'm definitely intrigued to find a better one, and hopefully someone does have a better one than this. Um, but to be honest, the drone does the job here, so it's not necessary. It's just nice to have. Um, when it comes to actually like getting into B as well, first of all, I don't have any actual like proper shocks. Actually, no, I'll talk about that later um, with post-plant. 
Um, I don't have any like proper shocks here as well. Once again, as I've, I've already said, really like sometimes I'll like shock yellow um, if we haven't taken it yet, or I'll shock deep. Uh, like through the viper wall or something, I'll shock like close viper wall, I'll shock like near snowman, I'll do some stuff like that. I'll also recon through the wall sometimes as well, catches people off guard in the open sometimes, you can get a free kill through the viper wall. Um, that's kind of how that will look. If I for some reason haven't used my drone yet, I will drone from here. Sometimes that does happen, it kind of depends once again on the on your team, the context of the round, etc. Reasons why I wouldn't have droned here. Um, and when it comes to post, because uh, post is basically all that happens on this site, right really. Here. I like playing yellow when I have a, a, a dart up sometimes, just because I feel like area. putting it in this position and like trying to fight out is pretty decent. Um, but if I don't have that, or if I want to play for post plant, then I like to have my shocks. Um, I do a really bad shock, really. I want to also find a better version of this. So I'll just double bounce, aim at the tip of this snow, and tap. And it lands default. It's not the greatest. But it gets the job done. Um, so that's kind of how, how that goes for post. And I think that's it for the guide, actually. Um, I don't really have like a massive extensive uh, playbook anymore. Because a lot of my playbook, fully enough, actually got removed with the new icebox changes. And I'm yet to fully replace it yet. And as time goes on, I definitely will get to a point where I feel comfortable again with a, like, my full, uh, full specialized playbook. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next one.